Hi everyone, Cody Don here. Welcome back to my lab. So, I was walking around outside. It's a full moon, so uh, I'm not sure about the camera, but with my eyes I can see fairly well. I can walk around and avoid obstacles just fine. You can see the, the moon's right there. It's very bright and shiny. I can cover it with my finger. <laughs> and, you know, the eclipse is coming up here in a little while. The moon's going to block the sun's light. And I was wondering, does the moon put out more light than it blocks? I mean, you know, it only blocks it for a short time, but also the moon's really dim compared to the sun. So, you know what, let's do the math. Alright, so this is turning out to be more of a rabbit hole than I thought. Uh, this is a list of uh, facts that I've compiled, mostly from uh, Wikipedia. You know, different things that I'm going to need for uh, this calculation. So start with, let's draw a little uh, model here. Let's put the sun over here. Nice happy sun. The earth. Draw in some continents. Whatever. And then uh, the orbit of the moon, which is slightly inclined. So like this. So here's the moon. And the moon's shadow comes off in a nice triangle with the umbra and penumbra. So, since the moon's orbit is inclined a little bit, the solar eclipses happen fairly rarely, about two to three times a year, and a total eclipse going across the center of the Earth happens much rarer than that. So let's uh, go through, and let's first of all figure out how much light is reflected off of the moon onto the Earth. So let's draw the Earth in the middle here, continents again, okay and the uh, moon's orbit. Now, of course, we're doing this as a circular orbit because, you know, this is an average over a very large number of years. You know, differences are going to kind of even out. All right, so let's put the sun over here. So at this point, the moon has a brightness which is about one four hundred thousandths of the brightness of the sun. So the moon is not super bright, but of course our eyes adapt very well in the dark, so the moon gets to be bright enough to use. So now you'd think that when you go to halfway point, the uh, brightness of the moon would drop to half, right? You know, half of it's illuminated. That's actually not true uh, due to uh, differences in the albedo depending on the direction that the light's coming. You know, crystals reflect light differently depending on which angle the light comes in at. But also the, uh, you know, mountains and craters create shadows. So you got a lot more shadows on the moon when it's at this stage. So it actually works out that the brightness here is only about 8% of the brightness of the full moon. And of course, uh, new moon is 0%. In fact, I compiled a little table based on the angle, so so about 45 degrees, the albedo is about point, or the, the brightness is about 0.4 of what it is here. Uh, at here it's about 0 0.08. So 0.4, 0 0.08. And then here at the 120 marks, it's about 0 0.032. All right. So here's our points. Let's uh, make this. 1.0. Now let's get a little average here. Now since these are spread out evenly, we can actually do this by adding up all these things, all these uh, numbers here, and then dividing them by the number of points. That should give us an approximate average of how much uh, the average brightness of the moon is. So, uh, alright, so that gives us a 2.024 uh, brightness points, and let's divide that by 8, and that gives us uh, an average brightness of about 0.25. So its average brightness is actually a quarter of the brightness of the full moon. So that would mean we'd times the 400,000 by 4. So that gives us the average brightness of the moon during the month is 1,600,000 plus <laughs> of the full, you know, the sun. So, there we go. 
So this means that uh, it's going to take, let's see, how many, this number of seconds before we receive the same amount of light from the moon as we would receive from the sun. So let's divide that by 60, that gives us some number of minutes, divide that by 60 again, that gives us some number of hours, by 24, gives us about 18 days, 18 and a half days worth of uh, moonshine to equal one second of sunshine. All right, so that's, a, that's about half a month. So a month will give us on average two seconds worth of uh, sunshine. Seems, sounds about right. All right. So now let's figure out how much light the moon blocks on average. This might actually be a bit more tricky. So we get about uh, two to three solar eclipses per year. Uh, now we need to figure out how long those eclipses last. So the diameter of the penumbra, the uh, actual total part of the shadow, is about 7,000 kilometers which is about uh, yeah, it's a little over half of the diameter of the Earth. So that means that uh, for a large portion of the eclipse, the moon's shadow is only going to be part way onto the Earth, and that's assuming that the, uh, the eclipse goes through the Earth, you know, mostly through the middle here. Most eclipses are going to kind of nick the top of the planet or the bottom of the planet. So let's assume that... Uh, we get, uh, on average, one eclipse, you know, the equivalent of going through the center of the Earth once per year. So this is once per, once per year. That's probably about right. There might be a, a couple more, and certainly certain years are going to have more or less. So now, let's see if we can figure out how much light is blocked during this, uh, crossing of the earth. So once every year the amount of light that gets blocked. So the moon travels at uh, 3680 kilometers per hour. So that means the time it takes is about three and a half hours to cross the distance of the earth. <clears throat> However, the moon's you know, the center of its shadow can be way over here, and you're still going to get part of the shadow over here. So I actually need to add some time to this. I can tell you right now that my numbers are not going to be perfect. All right, so let's kind of get a general graph of what the brightness should be. So the, you know, the, the original amount of brightness, and then it's going to go down as the moon comes onto the Earth. This probably won't be a perfectly straight line like this, but we're approximating as much and then once the moon's you know shadow is fully onto the earth it's going to stay down at a lower point and then it's going to come back up back to the normal rightness so we need to figure out how long each of these sections are and how much brightness reduction there is uh, this this one here is going to be pretty easy because the moon's uh, area relative to the Earth's area is about one thirteenth. So that's the light blocked here. So this over here, these areas are going to be zero blocked. But this here is going from zero to one, or one thirteenth. So we can figure out how long this lasts, which actually should be pretty easy because we can just take... Okay. So if we took the center of the moon's shadow to the point where the center of the moon's shadow is going to make, so you know, about here, so we get the moon's shadow is completely on the earth, and the moon's shadow is completely off the earth, and the distance between these two points is uh, 7,000 kilometers, which should take about two hours. So that means this section here is two hours long. And the same for the other side is two hours. So that gives us four, so this is 1.5 hours here. All right, 
That, that seems like it might be right. I'm sure there's somebody out there cringing with my math. <laughs> okay, so if I take this section here, uh, at the midway point is going to be one seventh block, or so about one one half of the total blockage here. Ah, twenty seventh. I need to double the number, not half it. So this is one twenty seventh. This is the average value here. So one twenty seventh over a period of four hours, and then one thirteen and a half over a one point five hour. So that's uh, one thirty. So it's one thirteen and a half or five thousand four hundred seconds. <clears throat> so let's actually convert these to the same base. So we need to double this one. So that's the equivalent of doubling the time. Okay, so that's three hours. Right. All right. So we can just add these two here. It gives us twenty five two hundred seconds blocked at the 127th of the sun's light. Okay, so all we gotta do is divide this by 27, right? So that gives us 9,000, or 900, 333 repeating seconds of sunlight blocked for our ideal solar eclipse. Of course, solar eclipses are going to be more or less than that. My guess is most of them are going to be less. So let's let's round that to 900 seconds of sun blocked per year. Now, how many seconds did we figure the uh, moon put out? Reflected back to us. Sun reflected. So that was one second per 18.5 days. So that's three, six, five, two, five days per year. Divide that by 18.5 gives us 19.7 and some change seconds per year. So it does block more and I'd say an order of magnitude more sunlight is blocked by the moon than is received by it. Closer to two orders of magnitude even. Now I'd love to see how much is blocked for any given spot on the earth. Um, so I think you get at least some sort of an eclipse, usually partial, for any part of the Earth for about once a decade. So one in one in ten years. So this times ten, so that's uh, so that's one nine seven. Yeah, assuming once every ten years, ten percent of the sun is blocked for any given location. Or the, the moon still blocks more of the sun than it uh, reflects towards us. <laughs> All right. You can actually see how long it took me to do this video. You know, the moon was over there. Now it's over here. <laughs> yeah, even though it looks so bright and shiny, the moon really doesn't put out that much light. In fact, it blocks more light than it gives us. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there's going to be people that are like, oh, but your numbers weren't perfect and you're not a mathematician. And this is true, but I don't think I'm off by, you know, a factor of a hundred. <laughs> yeah. I didn't take into account things like uh, lunar eclipses, because those are so brief and, you know, they're only taking off a few hours worth of moonlight each uh, year. So uh, there's actually a lunar eclipse going to happen here. In, just a few hours from now. Uh, unfortunately, the moon will have set, and it'll be about noon my time when that's happening. And it's only a partial eclipse anyway, so. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. <laughs>